Boss, thanks for joining us and good to have you back. It's good to be back. Um, yeah, just nice to be, um, well, I say normal, but nothing's normal anymore, is it? But nothing nice to, to get up and, and drive in this morning and see see everyone's faces again. Uh, a bit strange to stand in front of the group on, what is it, the 6th, 7th of, 8th of the month, is it? Whatever the date is. And, uh, and say Happy New Year for the first time to everyone. So, um, odd, but... Um, Yes, yeah, it's been it's been all, all strange times, and it. So I'm sure it's going to get to most people at some stage, and uh, I've just had my experience of it at a very, uh, very busy time. Uh, it's been you've been obviously away from a distance, three games in that time, and two wins. What's that been like? Well, it's great that we got the two wins. Um, I think what we all learned as a group of staff is that the Cambridge game just didn't work the way we tried to do it. I, I, as fantastic as our streaming system is, it's not the way to watch a game of football as a manager. Um, and then our communication between me, Danny, uh, and then I had to go for Martin and Joe. It was it was it was very very difficult, and, and we only found out you know late on Christmas, etc. So it's hard to get real organisation to make sure we done it right. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that that would have changed the game in any way, shape, or form. You know, but but uh, it was nice that we were back at home, and then we were able to get a little bit more control and plan what the next two games looked like. And then obviously our performances um, done it were were a step up. I uh, thought we really went to town against Southend, and I was really pleased with the way that we played, and then showed some good qualities against against Salford, but but workmen like when we needed to be and difficult to, to break down in terms of uh, seeing it out. So, um, yeah, showed lots of qualities, bounced back from after a disappointing run. I um, have to give staff a big pat on the back because um, I must have drove them mad with all the phone calls, Zoom calls and everything else. Certainly that was before the games kicked off. So God knows what it must have been like from during the game. Um, my missus is had to experience sitting next to me watching games of football and, and, and losing my temper. But, um, you know, all things that hopefully we learn from, definitely we'll learn from and we come back and, and hopefully it makes us all uh, all stronger again. Touch on bouncing back from that Cambridge result. How important was it to do that against a rival like Southend? Well, it was important anyway because a disappointing run of results and I think it, it become even more disappointing from my perspective and I know from the players and the staff's perspective as well is that like we weren't miles off of the defeats that we had, which was which was frustrating, you know, Malcolm... Um, the Cambridge game was very similar. Like good, good, good start to the game, give ourselves a platform, and then, and then a couple of moments in it that that let us down. So we knew we wasn't far away, but at the same time we'd lost a few games. So it was important that we got back to winning ways. But it don't become much more important than playing against your uh, immediate rivals, um, uh, your rivals that are having a you know an up pick up in form and come into us confident and and, uh, and ready to try to make it tougher for us. I thought we boys really puffed their chests out and I was uh, I was impressed with the way that they really embraced the, the performance. It wasn't just a get through it, win the game by any means. It was a, it was a very, very good performance. And then to follow that up with a victory against Salford and, and, and to hold on to that three points in the manner that they did was must have been impressive. Yeah, obviously Salford had their time in the game and I you know, listened to some some reviews and some some opinions on on that game and, and people talking about how we threw our bodies on the line and and, and we you know we, we we done well to come through it with a clean sheet which we did and I'm not taking anything away from anybody but it felt a little bit like it was lost of the fact that we had our own additional chances um, we created a number of opportunities I felt we looked quite comfortable in the first half and then you're playing against a team like Salford so we touch upon rivals with South End but Salford in a funny sort of way because of where we've come from in our recent history. It's a big game that everyone looks out from. We all know what Salford are and what good good players they have. Um, for us to go and deliver that performance, follow up from from the South End game was was a delight. And I think, like I said before, there was some good in it, and then there was some good defensive displays. There was some moments that we had to ride our luck or see through, rely on your goalkeeper, and 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 that's why you have good good players and good people in your team. And in those two victories, two clean sheets, as you've said, and Tunji Akinola came back into the team. He's been patient, waited for his opportunity. Uh, have you been impressed with what you've seen from him? I have, and today was a proper chance for me to sit down and have a chat with Tunji about how he feels the performances have gone and for me to explain to him what I saw and areas where we think that at this level that he's going to be able to get better and make him more of a 
the more of an all-round defender at the level because that's what all these experiences are like for someone like Tunji. But I was delighted, you know. I, he, he's always prepared every day. He does his work, even when he's he, we, he was in the team before. He's out doing his extra work with with us as staff to make sure that he's best prepared. He's got a great attitude, um, and and I knew that when he was called upon, he would be physically ready and and, and capable. And we felt it was a really good game to to put him into. Um, and and he's taken his opportunity with both hands. So it's it's about now trying to help him stay on top of that. I think when he found his way into the team before it was his first experience of League Two football. And that doesn't always last forever. It's very unique that a lone player comes into the team and does the lot on their first loan. It was about, um, you know, chipping away. He's chipped away on that one out of position. And now he's come into it in what he would call his favourite position. And uh, it's been a good start. Another player who's obviously caught the eyes, he always seems to. Joby McEnough has just won player and goal of the month again. Fans obviously love him, but what about that midfield three? You've got Craig Clare, New Cece. That That's kind of been the settled one in recent weeks. What have you thought of that and what, and what do you like about that midfield three? Well, what I like about, like anything, is, is when you, you're able to pick a consistent team and pursue consistent units people get more familiar about playing with each other but what I think what we get from that midfield three at the moment is that all three of them understand their responsibilities in their position and then their responsibilities in their position from what we want as a group of staff and the expectations that come with it and then what happens then is there's an accountability for everybody you know they can come to me and say I'm not sure about this or this is what I think is going to make make us better and then the flip side of it it gives us a you know a consistent way to try and drive them on. Jobs takes that on in an abundance because of his, um, you know, his understanding, the way he helps manage the team on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he wins player of the month. It doesn't surprise me he wins goal of the month because he keeps, um, when I say surprising people, it's not that we ever have uh, any doubt over him, but he, he keeps uh, he keeps coming up with things that show how, uh, how capable he is at this level. Um but like, like I say, for me, not, not surprises. Uh, I think the three of them combine well. Uh, but at the same time, we have got people behind them waiting to waiting for their chance and and consistently pushing themselves in training to be ready to to step in. And that's what what's, what we need in order to be uh, more and more successful throughout the season. And another massive positive, I think, if you compare it to last year as well, our forwards are just scoring goals. Dan, uh, Danny Johnson's on seventeen and Connor Wilkinson's on ten, which is phenomenal form in front of goal. Yeah, it's, it's great form and it's about aspiring to, to do more and get better all the time. You know, it's, um, you know, we, me and Connor had a, had a chat when he surpassed last season's figure, which I think even Con would tell you that probably he, he should have and, and could have got more goals last year. Now it's about striving for more and, and, and needs to be focused on, you know, what he does for the team. And I think that's that's important is, yes, he's there to score goals. Yes, he's going to help us create opportunities for other people, which I think he's done a fair few times, whether or not his name goes down as that assist or he plays a part in a goal. So I think it's really important that Connor continues to strive to be better and better all the time and I think if he does then he'll, he'll continuously add to that telly. I mean with Dan um, it, it's, it's remarkable the goal he scores is uh, is fantastic outside the box, it was a really good team move but the strike from outside the box against Salford is a, is a real sign of a player in, in real confidence but we also have to remember the job that Danny does for the team. He's, he works tirelessly, he presses people, he uh, he runs the channels and helps us get up the pitch when we're under a little bit of pressure. So we're delighted, absolutely were delighted when we signed Danny last last uh, January because we felt that we were signing someone that could put the ball in the back of the net. And I think um, he's done that with bells on it, hasn't he? Plenty of positives and we're in good form. And, and we met the long journey to Carlisle this weekend. Yeah, nice one to come back to. Um, wondered if I could stretch COVID a little bit longer so I didn't have to make the trip. But no, um, yeah, it's um, it's the one that I've never actually done before uh, on a coach. So I wouldn't say looking forward to it, but the experience will be one I'm sure I'll uh, I'll look back on. But yeah, going to be tough. You know, a team that are bang at it, a team that are um, very intense, very you know, work hard. Uh, in very good form, so confident players. It's going to be a real challenge. Carlisle's always a challenge from what people tell me because I said I've never been there before, but people always tell me what a challenge it is to go to somewhere like Carlisle. When you spend that much time on a coach, it's always going to be uh, a challenge once you get up there. But um, we know that it's a team that are in very good form. But at the same time, we go there, and as I say, I think most weeks, we back ourselves against any opposition. If we perform to the level that we feel we're capable of, we feel we're capable of going there and winning. And once we get to that game, that'll be your 41st game as head coach of Leighton Orient and, and one-year anniversary weekend. Yeah, I didn't realise it was 41. Um, but 
um, said to you before, like the actual date always is a little bit of a funny one for, for me in terms of exactly when that fell. So, um, yeah, you know, for, for me to have been in the role um, that for the length of time that I have already is, is good. Um, I think if you can show that you've, you know, you've got that first year of, especially in a new experience of anything, um, show you've got that, that, that bit of staying power to get through that first year, then you learn so much about yourself. I've learned an incredible amount about myself and about my team and, you know, how we can get better, what we can do to improve. And then I think we found an ingredient that allows us or helps us to win games of football. So incredibly, still incredibly privileged to be manager of this football club. You know, it's a wonderful football club anyway but a club that's incredibly dear to my my heart and um i just constantly i suppose aspire to to get better to do better and do more in terms of making this club as successful as i can be and in that year do you have any standout moments that that, that you really look uh really like looking back on sorry yeah i've got a few i think uh, before lockdown we had some games against mansfield and cambridge which probably drifted into the distance for a lot of supporters but for me it was probably the first time that i watched our team in the way that I felt we could really win games of football. We scored a couple of good goals. We got real control against Mansfield and Cambridge. And we looked at, we looked a good team for the first real time over extended periods in those games. Then obviously the, the long break of lockdown, but then think when we've come back, there's been a number, I think, First one that sticks out is, is is Plymouth because they were such a shining light last year to, to beat them in the manner that we did uh, against them was a delight and then at the end of it we were supposed to get Tottenham I know we didn't but but at the same time we still achieved that uh, that fixture that we'd, we'd all sort of aspired to do and then after that I think the games against um, the games against uh, Bolton because it's Bolton and, and we win 4-0 at home uh, really disappointed not to be able to celebrate that one in front of the fans. I think the fact we beat our local rival South End is always something that means an immense amount. And I think the last two things that I would su- would suggest is being able to look up in the stands at the Newport game and see fans and experience beating the team at the top of the league in a good performance with my family there is something that I'll remember because it's um, something that we don't get to do at the moment. And I think the fact that I look around and I've got a uh, I think I've got a tattoo of myself on somebody else's arm. It's quite a surreal experience, but something that uh, I'm not sure anyone sets out to achieve, but it shows that uh, there's people out there, supporters out there in this club that uh, that have gone to that level of dedication is uh, is quite remarkable. And finally, it's January, so you're going to get asked this an awful lot. Yeah. Is, is there any transfer business ins and outs that you can open up on? There's a lot of um, conversations going on and that have been going on for a while. I would expect... Very, very soon that there will be some movement uh, both ways. I would, uh, I would like that to be the case. I think it's probably obvious, but, but we would like that to be the case. Um, we've had the conversations that we feel we need to have at this level on our side of things with regards to players that potentially will be going out, and I think that you know those those will evolve and come out, and I think it's important to to allow some um, movement within the squad to freshen up the group and also give those players that are going out the opportunity to build a further career away from Leighton Orient between now and the end of the season. So I think that's vital. And then on the incomings, we've had some real uh, strong conversations and meetings with, I say meetings, Zoom conversations, phone calls with um, with potential targets and players that we're hoping that we might be able to bring in. So never, you know, I suppose never never say never, but never never quite say that things are actually done. Uh, but the sooner we can get those things moving along from, like I say, from an in and an out perspective, the, the better it'll be for everybody.